Nate, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I really appreciate your time. Uh, for those watching or listening, we haven't had the pleasure of meeting you. Could you share with everyone your name, your company name, and where you guys are located? My name is Nate Jones. I work for Big Blue Plumbing. We are in Alameda, California. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. And we're talking for an excellent reason. You had a awesome 2022. Hopefully you're having a great start to the 2023 year. Uh, we're going to let you brag for a second. Do you remember what you did in uh, total revenue last year? I believe it was somewhere just below 700000 Yeah, that's fantastic. That makes you a, a crown champion at certain path if, if you clear that $500,000 mark. And so we, we Paul, Paul sent me an email. He's like, I got a great guy you need to talk to. And I said, if you're, if Paul's bragging about somebody, that means I have to get him on the show. Because Paul's a great guy, but he has high expectations for people. Yep. Um, so we're going to talk about your service call process in a minute, but before we do, I really love learning people's personal journeys and how they got to where they are. I think that that speaks volumes about, uh, just how they do everything in their life. So, uh, how did you get into plumbing? It was not a traditional route, correct? It's not like most, it was not family related or friend related in any sense. Um, right. for me, uh, I had been bartending for 10 years before that uh and getting older in age and realizing this isn't something that has uh longevity no. nor is it that fulfilling for me and i always really liked the idea of i grew up on a farm and i like the I, I always like working with my hands and i liked helping people like they you know be able to you know go do something and help them with something with, you know, building something. Yeah. And I loved woodwork and all that, but at the same time, I didn't want to take that passion, that type of hobby and go do it as a job. Sure. Uh, I know plumbing isn't something that everybody's jumping on. It's something that like, it's it, no matter where you go, it's always, no matter what, it's always going to be needed. You go to a spaceship, they're going to need plumbers for plumbing there. <laughs> it's just something that is, it's never going to stop. True. So I saw good possibilities in it and ways to help people. And that's thought that would be the direction I'd like to go in. And I haven't heard it. Very cool. Where, where'd you grow up? You said you grew up on a farm. Where, where at? Uh, at Ohio. In Ohio. So what, you wanted to go to this, the big city of San Francisco and try something different? Uh, when I was, I uh, started skateboarding when I was 13. And I started getting sponsorships. And one of the companies I was getting sponsored by was out of San Francisco. So I had flip flopped around from Florida to San Diego and basically I was back in Ohio for a stint. And I called the company and I said, Hey, do you know of anybody that's either going to New York or San Francisco? And they said, Well, actually we have a guy's in a van coming back to San Francisco from New York. Okay, yeah. Come pick me up. <laughs> basically I you know, bummed around in San Francisco while people sleep on people's couches, and then one thing led to another, and I just stay. Now that's right. Now you're a native. That's right. That's great. That's great. Now, how did you get? You mentioned plumbing, but did you like look for an ad, or did you like? How did you get introduced to Big Blue? I'm assuming that was was that your first. This is this your first foray into plumbing, or were you with a previous? Yeah, this was it. So, how did you uh, connect? There, with them? there were two companies out of Alameda that I knew of, and. Um, so I basically applied to one. Didn't get a good vibe from them. Yeah. I'm not going to let you any names. No. Yeah. And then I came here, uh, and the field supervisor was here, Nick Minnie, yep. and he's like, oh, interview right now. And I'm like, cool. And we go through the interview, and, um, you know, basically how I found them, which your question was, I just looked up plumbing companies in the area in which I live in, which is in Albany. Yeah. That's where that's it. So... Yeah. From there, had a really good vibe. He was like, yeah, sounds really good. I'll put your application on Paul's desk, and he'll give you a call. Yeah. And then you talked to Paul. What, what were your vibes oh. to talk? No, not 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 right away? No. He, I was kept calling about every two or three days, and they were like, oh, he's not here. He'll get back to you. He'll get back to you. And I just kept calling and calling, and Finally, my wife was like, you know what? This is like a week and a half later or so. And finally, my wife's like, you know what you should do? Get up really early, go down there, 
and you know talk to him like don't wait anymore for this phone call <laughs> um early in the morning he's in the parking lot he i walk up to him I'm like hey i'm nate i've been trying to get a hold of you and he's just like okay. you'll hire me <laughs> like i'll talk to you he's yeah like, and basically he's just you know he kind of told me he wasn't really planning on hiring me is that right you know it was he was like why do you want this job so bad i go i just i want to get into the trains yeah i'm a hard worker i'll I'll do you good. Yeah. <laughs> i tell you what, someone shows up my parking lot first thing in the morning. I'm like, I'm, I'll find something for you. So that's great. That's fantastic. That's kind of what you said. I'll find something for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, we talk about it all the time. I've been doing this 20 years. We're like, if you get somebody that shows that kind of initiative, we'll find a spot on the bus and then we'll slide around where, wherever he, he finds. That the- was kind of the thing, the initiative. I was calling a lot and then finally just showed up like, you know, you know, if you're not going to answer my calls. Right. Yeah, no, good for you. Answer me now. Yeah, and it's worked out beautifully. So, what was your what's your what was your training experience like? Then, how did you kind of get uh, get up to date on everything? I mean, you bartending to plumbing, um, it's not a natural transition. Granted, it sounds like you're you're handy, which is good, but uh, but still, you got to learn it. So, what was that like? Uh, it was, uh, it was amazing. You're uh, at forty years old and having to re having to learn something again. It's like going back to school again. To, so right. you're you're having to use your brain again. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, opening my eyes to just, I mean, you, everybody just says, oh, plumbing, just, you know, turds and toilets. It's not. It's, <laughs> you know, there's so much more to it. And it's, yeah. there's a great, I still have so much more to learn. It's, it's been a, it's been a really cool journey. And uh, the first, the, the beginning learning experience was just basically going with other plumbers to jobs and just being there kind of like my first day, uh, the guy I went out with had sold some jobs installing toilets and some, uh, some faucets and stuff. So the guy I was with showed me how to build a toilet yeah. and then the other one, you know, two more to do. And he said, okay, go do those now. Yeah. And that was, to me, it was awesome. I, was like, I did that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, very good, very good. How long was this? Was were you riding along with guys before you felt comfortable getting smaller jobs and kind of building up to it? Uh, I mean, you know, at, when you're an apprentice, you kind of ride along and dig holes and you know go clean and bring stuff. I, I did that and started basically taking on doing little things here and there along the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, for probably six months, seven months, something like that. Yeah. Before I kind of started feeling like I could, uh, before I shouldn't say I felt comfortable before, uh, other people started feeling comfortable with giving me jobs to do like, Hey, I need you to go over here and, you know, patch this concrete or go over here and cut this concrete, pull this pipe and lay in some new pipe, put a clean out in or something like that. It's like, right. You know, it was a gradual process. Yeah. Pretty yeah. good. I mean, with, for, I mean, you think gradual, but like six, seven months and now you're like, yeah, that's true. You know, I, I, you know, you're there and I'm watching these guys work. And I remember asking one of the guys who worked here, Pardo, I'm like, how, you know, when do you know like, how to do this? Like, how do you figure this out? How did you map all this out? You know, yeah. it's like, next thing you know, you don't even realize it happened, but you're doing it. And it's exactly. like, there was like, I didn't know. Now I know. It was just, it happened. It just happens. That's it. It just clicked. That's cool. Now, a big, a big part of it, you know, obviously is the technical side, but also, you know, Big Blue, Certain Path, we put a lot of value in communication training and educating homeowners and helping them make the best decisions. What was, uh, you guys had training today, right? Well, let's let's start there. What was your training topic today? Uh, we were watching a video today on Crowd Champions, and then oh. they are on a board and basically... Uh, a lady just asking them questions about yeah. like their steps so what happened you so very cool yeah. very cool so what uh what what's your what was your communication training like what's your i guess your how often you guys get together to, to go over videos or talk about steps of the call or maybe different objections guys are running into uh that would be definitely every tuesday not to do some kind of training almost every day uh yeah. fridays we tend to do kind of this thick same type of the training, but we also go over our numbers and then, you know, we can go over calls as well to figure out like, you know, past calls and future calls to say how they should be ran. Yeah. 
um, Thursday, we just do actual plumbing training. Great. That's great. So you're constantly learning, you know, you're constantly having that reinforcement, even from the minute you were an apprentice, right? It's not like, okay, you got to do the technical, then we're going to tre- teach the communication side. You've been exposed to the whole thing the whole time. Yeah, actually, when we when I first came here uh, pre-COVID, we actually did training every day at 6.30 in the morning. But every day, it wasn't necessarily the running calls train. It was Mondays was drains, Tuesdays was hydronics. You know, Wednesday was water heaters and Thursday, you know, so on and so forth, gas or whatever. Every day was, we would do a 6.30 to 7.30 train. Yeah. Now we only do that Thursdays, but now we do more Tuesday, Friday, we do more uh, service call training. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. But, you know, it's nice you guys get in in the office in the morning. Like I know there's a lot of competitors, a lot of people that it's, okay, we dispatch our guys from home. But I feel like you lose that that company vibe, that kind of, I'm it's kind of corny to say family vibe, but how nice is it? Essentially, nice. that's exactly what I call this company. And that's the one thing that I really like about working here is it does have a family vibe. It doesn't sound, I, if, if the people think that sounds corny, so be it. But yeah, I say it's the, the reason I like working here. It's also the reason I don't like working here. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like your brothers and sisters and it's like, you know, it, it's that, that vibe is family. Little di- little different than than bartending, huh? Well, oh, let's go. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I bet you bartended some cool places, but uh, I only bartended at one place, and that was in San Francisco. And is that right? I was the bartender. I was the bouncer. I was the janitor. I was the door guy. I was breaking up fights. I was cleaning up puke. You know, it was like. Well, at least you got some exposure there with some of the gross stuff. So yeah, <laughs> I'm teasing. No, it's a, it's, I'm sure it's a, it's a much healthier environment, too, so that's great. Yeah. Support for this podcast comes from Train. Did you know the Train Home app gives homeowners control over their train smart comfort system from the palm of their hands? Give them the power to adjust temperature, hot or cold, set schedules, monitor usage, and optimize energy from anywhere. The Train Home app gives homeowners the ability to control how their environment feels so they can create their perfect cozy space. Download the Train Home app on the App Store today or get it on Google Play. Let's dig into how you uh, approach each call and kind of how you communicate with homeowners, what you're seeing. So uh, let's start off um, as you're driving to a call, you're dispatched to a call. What, you know, what kind of information are you searching for about the homeowner, maybe about the home? I mean, what are you given from dispatch kind of Fill that part in, if you would. So we use a service Titan. And on our service Titan, it will have why they call. Um, and you can even listen to the call most of the time. It's recorded, so you can, if even if it's kind of like you're under, uh, not understanding kind of what it's saying in the writing, because in the people who are taking these calls are not plumbers. So it's like they're just, you know, translating what the client is saying. Uh, so... Once I kind of do that, I figure out uh, on the ride there, basically I'm looking at the neighborhood, what kind of houses there, you know, like what kind of, are these older homes? What's the, you know, are these, you know, is it, have I worked in this neighborhood before type of thing? Um, And depending on what the call was about, I usually try to get in my head already, like what is this about? Like what's going to help fix this? How long will this take? I start to try to, uh, uh, wheelhouse like uh ideas of how to take care of this so i'm mentally prepared when i go into their house right right very good very good so when you uh you know you pull up to the house right you you get out quickly you don't want to spend too much time in the car so they're thinking what's he doing out there you walk up to the home knock the door turn uh they you know they, they greet you um how do you kind of start building that connection with a homeowner right away because you know people don't always want to call a plumber, right? They could be distressed. They could be upset. How do you kind of start making a connection, get maybe them to calm down a bit? Are there certain questions you like to ask to break the ice or what's your kind of process? I like to make myself, I'm not sure to say make myself. I try to make sure that I'm smiling, which I'm always, I'm, I, when I go there, I clear my head. I don't, anything that's going on in life, I'm here to help these people. Like I said, I like helping people. Yeah. And I always remind myself of that. And, you know, I like to show them I'm here to help. And by that, I like with a smile. 
and that's a friendly greeting, basically. You know, get you know the first name basis down. You know, you know uh, the shoe cover presentation that we do. We always wear our shoe covers, like you know, hey, I'm here to protect your health. That right there, so they start to feel a little more comfortable. And then you know, just tell them a little bit. You know, is this your first time using Big Blue? You know, well, let me tell you a little bit about myself, about the company that I work for. Very good. See. So, you know, you get into that right away. I wanted to, let me interrupt you real quick. So you, you like to kind of give it, you know, what we call a credibility statement yeah. right away. Okay. You, okay. What, what do you well, say? I, mean, I, I like to say, you know, you know, typically you're what I, it, everybody's different as far as when you go to a client's house. Some people are in a rush. Some people are slow. Some people don't even really want to let you in the door. The problem is right out here. You know, sure. I try to always just kind of slow everything down a little bit. Yeah, a little slower, but I want to get to their concerns too, as well. That's the first thing I try to usually ask. I'm here because your garbage disposal is that correct? You know, typically I'm trying to get three yeses and a thank you if I can. Ah, uh -huh. my truck parked properly out here. Yes. Can I call you Betty? Yes. And I'm here for garbage disposal. Yes. Well, hey, thank you for using Big Blue. Um, you know. Like I said, my name is Nate, and then I go on about you know a little bit about myself and the company that I work for. Yeah. Usually, I walk towards the problem, and then even then, I kind of go over like kind of what they should expect from this call. You know, I, you know, it's a garbage disposal. Yeah. Well, this garbage disposal is connected to drains. You know, do you have a crawl space here? I, I'd, I'd like to look at those too to make sure that if I hook this garbage disposal back up, these drains are going to, you know, be able to handle it. They're not. There's not some crazy leak down there or something right like that. Right. Let me uh, backtrack just a, a tick. You mentioned you like to talk. You, you talk about Big Blue and your your yourself. What do you What do you say? Because these are good. That's a good nugget for people that are that are watching. Maybe new technicians especially. So um, what I what I try to get to is like you know, hey, like I said, get to my name so I, they know it. Uh, you know how long I've been working at Big Blue. Um, basically, from there, it's like how. I always like to say how I, you know, the reason I like Big Blue is because, you know, it's a family atmosphere and we do training and it's a very professional company uh, yeah. there. It's like, I like to go over kind of what the call can be like, you know, you know, what I want to do today is figure out what's happening, why it's happening, how to make sure it's not coming back again. Yeah. And then uh, how I'm going to have to do a thorough evaluation of your plumbing system to know exactly what's happening. Um, then kind of go over how uh, we use Service Titan. Uh, we use straightforward pricing, um, how we have a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. And if you're not hundred percent satisfied, you don't have to pay. Yeah. So if you know that and I know that, what kind of work do you think I'm going to do for you? Yeah. 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 Uh, just those type of things, uh, for those, it, it, it's always varying. It, 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 it changes as far as, you know, uh, the, what, kind, what, what's going on with the client stuff. Yeah. I'm sure you, we, you know, it, I, I, you doing that, I'm smiling, right? And like, you know, the body language, people reciprocate that body language and it kind of puts them at ease, right? You can kind of see if it's a tense situation initially, they go, okay, this this guy isn't coming in to, to take advantage of me or or I feel like he's going to be able to help. Yeah, I, I reassure that all the time. I'm not here to take advantage of people. I'm not here to make you do this. Yeah. If you don't if you don't like what you're hearing from me or my service, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. And you can go with other plumbing companies. I'm not... Here to switch your arm. I'm here to help you. Right. With right. my help, I'm offering you these things. And I'm going to do my best to make it work within your budget. Yeah, very good. So, uh, yeah, obviously, people want to take you to the area of concern. And we'll, we'll get to some examples of those in a minute. As you kind of walk through the home, do you do like a visual? We always talk about safety inspections, right, and the value of those for the homeowner and the company. Are you just doing it that way? Or do you tell the homeowner, hey, I'm... While we do this, I'm going to do a, a visual safety inspection, make sure there's no other areas of concern, or how do you approach uh, safety inspections? Uh, well, like I said, I'm going to, uh, earlier back in the steps, I said, you know, I'm going to do a thorough evaluation of your plumbing system. That's basic. That's, That's the thing. thing. Uh, and I'm always walking to the house. I'm not just looking even at plumbing. I, I, I always like to look to see how the person, and I know it might sound creepy, but to see how they live it compliment on co make compliments about their house you know it's like oh i really love this painting it's really nice it reminds me of this you know right you know what a great view i've got of people's houses they forget oh, that their view is like a you know everything and they're just like oh yeah i never look at that anymore yeah right 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 do you get people that say no i'd rather you just kind of stay in the bathroom with the toilet i want you to look at and 
And how do you navigate that kind of situation? Or do you feel like you've disarmed them that most of the time people don't give you any trouble? Most of the time people don't give me any trouble. Uh, I should call them, don't give me any trouble. Most of the time people don't have any pushback towards me. Uh, looking at their plumbing system because they want to know. Yeah. You know, that's the idea. It's like, oh, you're going to get in my crawl space? You're going to go look at my drains? No one goes down there. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I want to make sure that, you know, when I leave here, you're like, wow, he really, you know, fully looked at my plumbing system and I feel much better about this versus going there and here's my leaky tump spout and he put a new one on and, you know, it's not leaking, but that's just it. Like, did you check the water pressure? Maybe that's the reason that the tub spout's even leaking to begin. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget you. I'm in I'm in the Midwest. We have basements. I always forget you guys have it a lot harder. Got to get into the dirt, the dirt and the grime down there. And... There there are some basements here, but yeah, there definitely are. I'm not a small guy in any sense, too. That's funny because people will be like, you know, I'm six three and a quarter or some change, and you know, people are like, you're gonna get down there, like, well, I, you know, I'm not so much. Crawl spaces aren't so much height wise. It's girth lot <laughs> I can I can still get down there for that. I'm still good for now. I'm still good yeah, for now. I'm good for now. <laughs> Give me a few more years. That's great. Um, all right. Well, let's, I want to kind of talk about um, how you educate uh, customers on the certain problems they're having, right? And how maybe that problem that they know is caused by something that they don't know or don't realize. So, for example, you know, common common plumbing problem: a running toilet, right? Maybe a flapper is broken, but you know, maybe the real issues. I, I don't know what your water's like in, in the SFO area, but maybe it's crappy water to be very blunt. So how do you kind of educate people that, you know, not we don't want to just take care of the flapper, you know, maybe there's a whole toilet rebuild we want to look at because this toilet's old, or, or maybe let's look at water filtration. Kind of, kind of talk me through how you you talk a customer through that, that particular situation. Uh, in that situation, typically it's always like a a, a good, better, best. Um, you know, yeah, we can do this, but this might happen. Yeah, we can rebuild, but this still might be a problem. Um, yeah, we can put this filtration. Our water is actually, we have Hetch Hetchy water, which is actually pretty good, but still you can get some calcium buildups and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just try to give a good, better, best situation. Like, okay. you know, this, this I know is going to work. Yeah. This is probably going to work and this one might work. Yeah. You know, but as far as like, you know, that's usually, it's a pricing thing too. So. Oh, sure. Will you actually have the good, better, best conversation at the toilet or you don't wait until you sit down and maybe go over options? Will you kind of say, Hey, Mrs. Jones, you know, this, this toilet, it's a, the, the flapper. Yeah, we can fix that, but it's 30 years old and you do, you know, we could rebuild it. You know, uh, are we having that conversation at the toilet or is that a, a sit down conversation at the end? Uh, I mean, that kind of depends too, but like typically, I I know we're supposed to sit down at tables and stuff like that. I yeah. I, tend to, I, I, like, I like to stand up when I'm presenting stuff. I, yeah, um, I have sat down. I do sit down from time to time, but I, I like to stand up when I present. It's fair, that's fine. And but it, typically, it's it's more towards, you know, I, if it's the, I need to look at other things too on top of it. So. I, I don't come there and go, oh, hey, so, oh, yeah, it's flabber. Okay, here's your options. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to get more of a, a build of everything there to figure out what's going on. Okay. So you're just kind of conversing with them about their options. You're not looking to close them right there at that moment about so, the new toilet. Yeah. So I don't usually, I, I spend a lot of time talking and I spend probably way too much time explaining. <laughs> I over explain things to people. And yeah, I, I, I even, for, <laughs> And I catch myself doing it, the, you know, well, this could happen. And it's like these, like, you know, very small percentage things that could just be like really bad where they're like, oh my God, it could. And it's like, well, it probably won't, but I just want you to be prepared that I want yeah. everything. I, that's this is my point. I over explain it sometimes where it's like a little bit too much information. Now, is it tech? Is it tech talk? Or are you talking about, you said situations, like if you don't, you know, if this isn't taken care of, this could degrade and that it could leak leak and yeah. isn't more that like you know that type so of stuff. both sides new and old like because sometimes things are like <clears throat> with plumbing uh there's the unknowns sometimes and you have to go uh you have to be very clear that hey this is step one 
and a possible many steps. Yeah. A step one might fix it, but it might be, you know, this is multiple steps that we have to go through to, to get this thing diagnosed properly. Yeah. Or if you can skip the whole thing and put in a whole new, that will all work. I know. Right. Right. How about, you know, if you're looking again to, to kind of stick with this, a toilet example, it's an old toilet, it's 30 years old. You can tell the rest of the house is, has not really been updated much, right? Just so it's maybe a four bedroom house. You know, Mrs. Jones, do you mind if I look at the other toilets? Is that kind of a transition to, to think about, hey, this one's having problems. Maybe the others are having issues as well. Is that kind of a natural transition or are you just kind of wander through the house and bring it up as, as you, as you see them? Or there for the toilet? Well, if you have, say, one toilet's having a problem, you know, say one toilet, the flapper's broken or whatever, and it's 30 years old, and that rest of that house is also old house, hasn't been updated much. So you're thinking, I, you know, in my mind, I go, pretty high likelihood maybe the other toilets are just as old, right? And maybe mm -hmm. just, just about ready to have some of those problems. But most homeowners don't think about that. I certainly didn't think about that when I first got into this, right? But, yeah. but it's to the homeowner's advantage to maybe know that, hey, those could break at any moment as well. So how do you kind of have that conversation with a homeowner who's not thinking that I've got other old toilets that might just do the same thing and then I got to call you out again. It's another service fee. So how do you kind of open their mind to, hey, it's really beneficial. Maybe I take a look at those other those other lavatories in your in your home to see what their situation is. Uh, I mean, the good thing about that is, for one, I'm there right now. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is how we do it with Service Titan is if we're doing... If we're doing multiple projects, the price goes down on the other project. Right. So if we put in one toilet, the rest of the toilets are going to go on at a discounted rate. So you won't ever get these toilets any cheaper than you will today. Very good. So that's your natural transition. Hey, you know, we're doing this one. These others are just as old. All matching toilets. Mm. That's another way of saying it as well. Yeah. Very good. Very good. How about when you notice, uh, you know, broken or are corroded fixtures and valves, again, same situation. You know, if if it's a problem in one bathroom, it could be in others. Or I know you said water filtration isn't a big thing out where you guys are, but uh, how, how do you kind of handle those situations? Again, if it's, if it's a problem in one spot, it might be elsewhere as well in terms of uh, educating the homeowner. Uh, yeah, this would just be happening during the, uh, the, the evaluation on the home as well. It's just the plumbing inspection that we go through. It's just, right. you know, we're kind of going through every possibility of all their plumbing system that could, you know, go wrong. So with that, it would be seen at that point in time, right? Yeah. You know, if it, 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 it'd be the same thing as the toilet. If it's happening here, it could be happening in other spots. So let's check those spots out. You know, sure. I always ask before I open a cabinet, you know, is it okay if I open the cabinet? You know, I don't want to start opening things up and they pop out that shouldn't. So sure, sure, uh, and I'm sure you ultimately always end up at the the water heater, and I guess their garage is where you guys are, right? Uh, some are, some are, uh, some are in a basement. We do have yeah. a few basements. Okay, uh, I've even seen some in the crawl spaces. There you go. Uh, Dug down and put that's it fun. <laughs> uh, so how so how do you explain it to a homeowner? Right, you know, ultimately I'd, I'd love to check out your water heater. Or is it just a natural flow of your inspection, you kind of just go. Natural flow well, for me. Okay. Not always the easiest sometimes because if you're there for a mainline clog, why are you looking at my water heater? Right. So how do you handle that question? What do you, what do you say? Uh, well, you know, it's eventually it's going to get to that point. So it's going to be, you know, I, I start asking questions too. Like, you know, have, you know, uh, is there, have you had any other problems? Is there other issues? Is there any, you know, concerns? Has there been any work in the area? Uh, no. You know, I'm going to, I want to get to the crawl space anyway, because I need to, I seem need to see the drains that connect into the sewer as is before right. I start running any kind of cable to make sure everything's okay. Uh, you know, from there, it's just like, and like I said, it's, we're doing a thorough evaluation. We're going to see like what the water is going into that. Is it copper? Is it galvanized? And then that usually leads right up to the water heater itself. So Sure, sure. So in those situations, you got a clogged drain call, but you all of a sudden assemble upon a, a water heater that looks like it was uh, invented at the beginning of time. What's that uh, What's that conversation with, like with a, a homeowner to kind of go, hey, this might be something you think about, right? Do you have, you just start asking questions like you're running out of hot water or, or how do you get to this, you know, kind of transition to that? thought process for the homeowner that maybe clogged drains isn't your only problem. You got this water heater issue. 
Well, I mean, you kind of put it in, you kind of said it right there. You just start asking questions. Are you getting enough hot water? Is this thing giving any, any issues? You know, uh, there might be safety uh, issues that I see at that point in time, especially with a, a hundred year old <laughs> uh, you know, no TNP or something like that, or yeah, we have earthquakes, so you have to have earthquake straps here. Uh, just oh, another yeah. code uh, compliant type of things that would that would uh, that I would see, and I try to bring those up. And you know, and, and again, do you want to wait until you run out of wait till this thing doesn't work, or do you want to put in a hop a new water heater that has a warranty, and you know, you're not gonna have to think about it because this one, you're, it's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. Might happen when you're having company over and, you know, everybody wants to take showers and you have no hot water and it's Saturday or it's Friday night. Yeah. And you're not getting the water heater Friday night. So, right. But again, you're talking about those situations we talked about earlier, right? You're just giving them situations that, hey, this is something to think about. Yeah. And giving them option for it. Like, hey, I'll, I'll write this down. I'll give you an option for it. Again, it's going to be your decision. Right. I'm here to help you, but I'm going to give you the options. Right. Very good. How about, do you talk about, do you guys sell a lot of tankless or just tr 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 traditional tank? Do you, how do you talk to someone about, again, there's a lot of people that have no idea what tankless is. So how do you kind of speak about the value of tankless and what that can offer homeowners? Uh, that one is just basically comes down to, uh, efficiency, like what you're trying to get. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, the initial uh, investment you're going to make for those is going to be more, but you're going to get, there's, you weigh out the options. It's going to last, or the warranty on that is 15 years for one, for the tankless water heater. It's six years for traditional tank. Traditional tanks last and so on between, we'll say six and eight years. Yeah. Whereas the tankless water heater is going to, we're going to warranty it for 15, but it's going to last way longer than that as long as you service it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you just... So, that and you know the same, and then it goes to how efficient it is. So, uh, a tanked water heater is sixty percent efficient. Uh, Forty percent of the efficiency is going right out the flue, and it's always going to run. Whereas a yeah. tankless water heater only burns when you're using it. Yeah. So just kind of going through those type of steps to see if it, if they're if that's something they're interested in. Do they want to, you know, save on their gas, or do they want to not be, uh, you know, do they want to be more green? You know, yes. Yeah. Right, right, for sure. For and sure. also the idea of longevity. Do you want to have to do this two or three times versus just doing it once? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, those slow drain calls. Yeah, actually, let's talk about the slow drain. So uh, do you guys, uh, do you always use cameras on, on all those, or how do you approach those calls? No, we don't always use cameras on those. Uh, it depends on the drain. Our, camera that, our cameras that we have are meant for two inches and bigger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, we currently don't have a smaller camera than that. Uh, with mainline sewers, I'd always suggest after cabling it to camera in it. Yeah. Uh, we do have a charge for cameraing. Um, okay. so with that, you know, it's an option to say no to that. And if you're okay with that, then no, so be it. But yeah, uh, if you're jetting a line, then yeah, we can camera it while we're jetting it. Okay. And what do you, uh, how do you explain the benefits of the camera you just to, to a homeowner? Like, this is what you're going to see or what you could see. Like, what do you, how do you show That's exactly right. Like, why do you have a clog? Yeah. You know, it's in your line. I mean, we could clear this clog and then a month from now, or you have a break in this line. I mean, this is, that's my thing. With it. Like, don't you want to know? Don't you want to see? It might not be anything. And if it's nothing, it was just a soft clog, then so be it. Right. At least you know. Like, yeah. and you can see your sewer line and you can, you can be, you know, have that peace of mind. That's what I'm always trying to give to people is peace of mind. Support for this podcast comes from Redesign.co. Are you finding it hard to make your mark in the competitive digital world? Look no further than Redesign.co. Our expert services will ensure your business achieves maximum visibility through Google Ads, SEO optimization, social media management, and a strong online presence. Don't let potential customers slip away and allow your brand to blend in with the rest. Get in touch with Redesign.co and let our exceptional digital marketing team help you stay ahead of the competition. All right, so we so we go ahead and drop that camera. We know it's a broken line. So all of a sudden, I called you because I thought I just had a quick clog you're going to take care of, and now we're talking about a lot more money. Um, just for everyone to know, what, what kind of... Uh, 
main you know sewer line option repairs do you do you guys do? You said you do bursting, you do digs, right? And those are your two main things, correct? Yes, and in that situation, that's would be those options. We can yeah. there is a break, let's say, and it's outside the house. Uh, that's what the options would be. Like, well, we already see that there's this your sewers having problems. It's breaking for whatever reason. It's breaking. That tells me, like, you know, you probably want to replace this. But I'm gonna give you an option for digging this section and repairing. Yeah, because that's the route you want to go. We can do that. I mean, right. that's the thing. It's always about options. People want to be able to pick what they want to do, and not be told what to do. Right. Right. For sure. Very good. Um, I, real quick, I always kind of forget to, to ask this, so I want to be sure to now. You guys offer club membership, correct? Correct. There you go. When do you kind of start speaking about the the club? I mean, I'm sure the office probably talks about it a little bit. No. Uh, when do you when do you kind of, do you bring it up early in a call, or or is it only when you talk about options at the end? What do you prefer to do? Typically, options at the end. Okay. okay. When I start talking about options, when I go through the um, the options themselves. It always has a two-year warranty or a five-year warranty with club membership, and that's when I kind of explain club membership. Or if uh, if I'm you know going there, they already have a tankless water heater. I love telling them about the club membership because within our club membership, we flush out the water heater once a year to do that. Our club membership is a very small investment of one hundred twenty-five dollars a year. For me to flush out the tankless water heater is a lot more than that. So this is already, we're doing this for already a lower price. Plus then on top of that, we stay up on all your plumbing system. We look through everything. Once a year, we come to look at it and, you know, make sure that you're updated as far as what needs to be done. And all the warranties, like I said, if it's, I'm just using an example, a two-year warranty on something becomes a five-year warranty. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I, and I love that you, so many people get stuck selling clubs just like, hey, it's a discount today, you know, but yeah, I like you show the real value of it. So people aren't canceling yeah. all the time. Yeah. They're really, it's, it, it's a great value for one, but two, it's you're using one plumbing company that's going to know your house and, and, and know you, and you're not having to have a different stranger in there all the time or a different company that has to relearn your plumbing. Mm, that's good. I mean, people value their time too. You don't have to have some new guy, and, and yeah, that that's a good little nugget that, that a lot of people don't bring up. That's good. That's very good. And, and we take lots of photos, which stays in our service Titan. So it's oh, they have basically everybody has their own file in a sense. Yeah, you know everything that every estimate that's ever been given is it's there. We can see it. Every picture of the system of their entire plumbing system is there, so we can see it. It's always knowing, you know, before going out there who who our client is for sure that's great that's great all right let's get into building your you, you've talked about this whole this whole conversation I, you know mrs jones i can give you some options on that i can give you some options on that so when it comes down to actually building out your options to to converse about what see what mrs jones is going to go with are you doing that in the home do you go to the truck what's your to kind of think about it all and and, and get it all laid out for her or what do you prefer to do uh, it always changes. Um, I tend to try to do it in the home. Uh, it's, it's always very difficult to write these things up and still keep interaction with other people. For sure. Uh, and, and sometimes I need to make calls, not only to the office to make sure that we can schedule it for that day, but I'm also calling plumbing supply shops to make sure that the parts or whatever are available. And a lot of times while I'm having to do that, I'm also kind of writing things up. So it's like multitasking at that point. So yeah. sometimes I've got to the truck. Sometimes I'm in the crawl space still. Sometimes I'm in the garage. Yeah. Sometimes I'm in, you know, the bathroom. Like, you know, <laughs> talking about where it's like I'm standing in front of a toilet. Right. Right. But, you know, it, it really, I like to be completely present when I'm with, talking with someone and have, and I like to be prepared too. So it's, it kind of just depends really. Now, when you write, do you write the options out or are they all digital on the iPad? They are digital, but I have to still write the summary of what I would be doing. Because every, even though it's, it's there digitally, what we're going to be doing, every house is different. So in the summary, I have to write a step-by-step, -step basically, of everything I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. And do you present 
three options total, or will with each repair has two or three options, and then you go repair by repair. What what do you prefer to do? Uh, that's also going to obviously uh, everything's going to be different on that every call, but it's sure. it's going to be somewhere between two and three options, you know, uh, per se. Like you know, let's just say I I'm there for a garbage disposal, but I end up also seeing that their toilet uh, flapper is leaking, and that's the reason that. You know, the toilet's always, my toilet's always running, you know, that's not why I was there. So, you know, obviously the garbage disposal, it's going to be, you know, we can do a half horse for this with continuous waste or no, like it depends on the, you know, P-trap and continuous waste that they have. If it's yeah. just some kind of tubular stuff or chrome stuff, it looks like, you know, it might leak. I would have, I'm going to give the option for redoing it in ABS. Yeah. Uh, uh, solid and weld. And, you know, here's how half horse here's a three-quarter horse here's with continuous ways here's without also i found out you know your toilet yeah it's running well here's how much it is to rebuild it here's how much it is to replace it yeah that's only two options yeah but those are really you know there's a major and a minor tank rebuild but and with it's leaking it's mostly you're going to do a minor tank rebuild or replace it yeah for sure now when you get these options finally are they do you give it with a finance price as well or do you always just show the overall value of today's work Overall value, uh, I typically will bring up financing for bigger projects somewhere in the two, three, four thousand dollar range. Is typically where I start to go. Hey, for these bigger projects, you know, we do have some financing uh, available, and I kind of go over that with them just real quick, sure. uh, and I try to do it in more in more of a way because it's not so much, you know, I I, I go over what it, what we you know check. And credit card or doing this and that and i know we do have financing too if some if that's something you don't want to, if you don't want to pay for it right up front we have these 12 month and 18 month zero interest rate financing that you can use okay. you know it's not trying to be insulting to say you look poor and i'm going to give you financing sure you know it's it's more just a hey i i understand that you know taking this kind of money just having to pay it right now can be stressful so like, yeah the option to not have to you know do that Sure, it's un it's unexpected for most people. No one yeah. plans on having a major plumbing repair, um, unless people have dealt with plum. That's the one thing is sometimes you go to people's house and they haven't had a plumber there in ten or fifteen years, and they get a little shell shock. Yeah, so hold on to that. I want to talk about that one second, but before I forget, just to, to circle back on clubs. When you do you build the club in every option, or is it in like two of the options, or how how do you build it into your to your option? I give it its own option. It's its own option. Okay. Yeah. It's not tied into other, like, uh, options. It's just its own option. Its own option. Okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. So let's let's get back to the person who has had a plumber 15 years has got a lot of work. They go, what? I thought it was going to be 300 bucks, you know? So uh, what's that? Uh, how do you handle those objections of, boy, this is a lot of money and I got to think about it. So what what do you do to kind of maybe uh, diffuse the situation, kind of walk away, let them, let them process? Or or is there something you say? What, what do you do? Uh, so I always let them try to know, too, as we can break this down. Again, financing. You know, hey, we do have financing. I understand this is a great deal of money, and, you know, we have this the financing part of it. Also, you know, we can do these projects uh, at, you know, Let's take care of the major one and then kind of build our way back. Yeah. We don't have to do it all right now. Right. You know, that's another sense. Uh, the the money-wise, I, again, I'll try to do my best to explain why things are what they are. I mean, for one, we're in California. We are a business. There's tons of overhead. We are licensed, bonded, insurance, health insurance. You know, I, I try to go over those type of things uh, sure. to let them know why it's not just because they're like, well, this part should only cost this much. Well, yeah, but I also have to go get it. I have to drive and I have to come back or, you know, it's, and the person answering their phone, I have to warrant to you. Warranty. You know, happen, I have to come back to take care of it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. There's a cost of doing business. This isn't just yeah. a ha handyman that you're calling off the street. Exactly. <laughs> um, Let's see here. So how about um, people that go, oh, maybe I want to get other bids. Do you get people that do that sometimes? And if so, how do you handle that? How do you handle that situation? Uh, I just try to go through again of like, you know, well, I I don't like saying it like, well, what didn't you like about 
you know, my proposals. Yeah. You know, I, I, but I kind of hit around that type of thing and, and I try to get, you know, go back again over the steps of everything. I, you know, I, I understand, you know, having other people come and give you other options. It's great to have, you know, these bids. And then, but then I try to ask the questions of like, you know, is there anything you didn't like about mine? Is there something? Right. It's usually it comes out with price is usually about everything. And then I try to tell them about those side things. Yes, you can work. You can find other plumbing companies that are cheaper. The problem with cheaper companies, typically ours are taking shortcuts. Do you want a plumbing company that's going to take shortcuts and use cheaper material maybe, or uh, untrained plumbers to come and, you know, fix your problems? Yeah. And that's usually the cheaper ones that, that, you know, that are going to come and do that. That's the thing. It's we're a professional company. We stand by our word and our work. Yeah. You guys have been around for a while and you've seen, you fixed the work that, uh, that people have done on the cheap side, right? All of that. Uh, I bet. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Um, all right. Let's let's talk a little more positively. Someone goes, yes, let's Nate, let's go ahead with all that stuff. But it's a big project, right? Maybe it has to start in a day or so. It's the end of the day. You sold it. Uh, is there anything you do to kind of ensure that they don't cancel? Is there a deposit you collect? Is, do we start the job a little bit? What do you like to do? Uh, both. Uh, I Depending on the size of the project, uh, we can take a deposit, uh, 10% or up to $1,000. Uh, and typically, yeah, you know, just, they, we always say stick the shovel on the ground, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that may be, you know, if the water here is not working, drain it down. Yeah. Maybe even, you know, haul it away or something. I don't know. Just to kind of get things rolling. Right. Right. Just to show it's good. The, the project is on its way. Yeah. I don't really ever get cancellations though. I that's great. Did a lot of quality time with people and reassure them that you know you got the right company. Yeah, and that usually does it. I don't, don't usually get less cancellations. That's great. That means you're doing the right thing in the home. You're not flying through them. Well, you said you over communicate, so you guys are probably best friends by the end of each call. So <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Uh, just to wrap it up, Nate, I really appreciate all your time today. Um, okay. well, what what motivates you to do such a great job, Dan? Uh, my biggest motivation would be my family. But uh, I like I said in the beginning, I like helping people. It's and it's a fun job and be able to do that all the time. Different situation all the time. It is. I, I we do things that you know, like I said, a lot of people don't really want to do or have to deal with, and a lot of you know. Like you said, crawl spaces and darkest areas, you know, it's plumbing. It's not, you know, not everybody is, you know, informed about what that entails. Sure. Uh, so it's nice knowing that, you know, I, I have something to provide to people. I like that. Yeah. Like, you know, I wasn't the greatest in school. So, you know, but I'm, I feel like I'm, doing a good service as a plumber and I'm able to absorb that and learn that and teach that again. So that's, uh, to, that feels good about that part. That's awesome. That's great. All right. Very last question for you. What advice might you have for young, young plumbers, young technicians, like that were just starting out like you were, um, on how to do really well in this industry? Be on time show up early and then uh don't be scared of hard work stay off your phone uh watch listen ask questions um yeah that's really about it that's great work hard and and yeah stay off the phone it's funny you got to say that but that's what it is today <laughs> it's a big part of it and yeah. it's a big part of like I mean, there are some young guys that come here, uh, and you know, they're really young and it's like, but their work ethic, it's like, wow, like look at them, you know, you're going to get in there and work right on. I love seeing that. And then you get some guys that come in and it's like, you know, they shovel a lot, you know, they take a break. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is such a drag. I don't want to dig. It's like I, at 40 years old, I was out here digging holes after holes after holes. Yeah. This tech now, I'm a plumber. I'm still out there digging holes. Yeah. It doesn't stop. Right. It's the job. 
It's a job. It's yeah. hard work. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not prepared to ha be able to do hard work on a day to day basis, find something else to do. Yeah. But I bet it's pretty rewarding. You get to go home and go, man, I, I had a good day's work. You're making good money as a, as a plumber, you know, and, and it's so rewarding. You get to help Mrs. Jones, who is so frustrated with her. Or, you know, didn't know what was going on, and she's got people coming over that night, and she's freaked out, and, and boom, you're a Superman. You get to solve, you know, save the day, right? And now you're, you're a Superman. Yeah. And, and that's, that's you're absolutely right. It's it's very rewarding at the end of the day. You feel good, and you help people. Like I said, it's, that's what I really like doing. And sometimes, yeah, you feel like if you unzipped your jacket, there would be, you know, the Superman triangle. So I love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Nate, hey. Thank you so much for all your time this morning. Uh, I know I'm probably keeping you away from your first call, so I, I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you for your time, and and keep killing it. It's great to it's great chatting with you. Thank you. It's good talking to you too. Thanks for having me. I absolutely. All right. Have a great rest of your day, Nate. Thanks, buddy. Support for this podcast comes from Owens Corning Air Care. Uncover hidden opportunities and take your HVAC business to the next level with Owens Corning. Owens Corning has done the work to provide you with a turnkey system with a simple story that practically sells itself. Add duct replacement and attic insulation to your service offering as part of our program and elevate your sales today. Benefits include sales and product training, marketing support, and a rewards program. For more information on partnership opportunities, visit owenscorning.com slash aircare. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Certain Path family. Certain Path builds successful home service businesses and has for 23 years. We do it by providing contractors with a proven path to success, professional coaching, software solutions, and a member community of over 1,000 contractors just like you. Doubling your sales with a 20% net profit and an inspiring company culture is all possible. Let us show you the way. With Certain Path, success is made certain. Visit www.mycertainpath.com for more information.